Okay, so hopefully this is working now. Um, so I just wanted to make a short video uh, introducing the class. This is Econ 351 International Economics. So this is, you know, what might occur on the first day of class where the instructor introduces himself, the course, and the material. Um, that's what we're going to do right now. So it'll be short, a short video, uh, just sort of laying out the class and its expectations. So uh, right over here, uh, we should have a PowerPoint uh, that's it's like five slides, right? It's quite short. So first of all, I'm Dr. Thomas Kemp, I'm a professor of economics. I'll be the instructor for this course. I've been teaching at UW Claire. This is my 19th year. I frequently teach this course international economics and have been teaching it in a variety of locations for better than 20 years at this point. Uh, I have worked in the area as a former ports regulator, um, so you get, you're going to get a lot about seaports and things like that and how they operate because <laughs> can nerd out on that stuff for a long time. Um, so anyway, it's an, it's an area I'm, I'm pretty familiar with. Um, and I uh, look forward to teaching the class again. So this class is called International Economics. A lot of times it's called international trade and finance at other places. The textbook is called something to that extent. Uh, and that's because it's really two courses sort of put together. And uh, the, you're going to notice that they're, they're pretty separate, right? We're going to have the first half of the course, which is going to be roughly now till midterm, that'll be international trade. And that's essentially the microeconomics of the course. And so those of you who have taken Econ 103, uh, you know, first year microeconomics, and you remember doing a lot of supply and demand stuff, partial equilibrium stuff, you know, this thing shifts, it does that. You know, we're going to be doing a lot of that, you know, the first half of the term. Uh, the analysis will be significantly more sophisticated than it was in Econ 103 because, first of all, this is a 300 level course, and second, international trade is... is um, it can be can be pretty tricky. Um, there's a lot more nuance and detail to it than there would have been in really anything you would have done in, in a normal Econ 103 course. So to do that analysis, we're going to introduce a variety of models uh, for international trade. And you should think of these models as tools in a toolbox uh, for analyzing a variety of different scenarios. So just as where there's a place where a hammer is appropriate tool, uh, and there's a place where a hammer is an inappropriate tool. There's a place where a screwdriver is an appropriate tool. Uh, you get the idea. So it is with these models. Uh, we're going to cover, I, I want to say, four or five different models throughout the first half of the term. And they each have their applications. Uh, this is not a complete study of all models of international trade. Uh, that would take far, far longer than the time we have. Um, but the foundational ones are or will be covered here. Um, these models will illustrate the gains from trade. So who benefits, uh, who doesn't benefit, in some cases who loses. Uh, it will illustrate, they will illustrate uh, the distribution associated with gains, in other words who benefits a lot who benefits a little, who might be a little worse off. Uh, it varies, of course, right, based upon the assumptions that we make and based upon, you know, really what the right model is. Uh, however, a knowledge of all these models will allow us to choose the right one at the right time and to rel quick, relatively quickly arrive at the likely outcomes associated with a variety of international trade-based scenarios. Uh, in this first section of the course, we'll also be covering rudimentary trade policy. Uh, now, you know, when I taught this course the first time 20 years ago, we were sort of assumed that the future was freer trade. Because uh, indeed that had been the trend at that point, uh, really from the end of World War II through, up through just a few years ago. Uh, very recent trends have reversed, or sorry, very recent events have reversed this trend. Uh, and we now find ourselves in a environment of increasingly limited trade. It's not to say that the total volume of trade isn't still increasing, because it is. Um, you know, more goods and services flowed internationally last year than than any other previous year. 
So, but the environment's changing. And so we'll cover tariffs, which are essentially taxes on imported goods, cover quotas, which are limitations in the number of goods that can be imported, cover things like voluntary exports, export restraints, which are sometimes called VERs. Um, it's kind of a funny one. Uh, we'll get to that later on. We'll talk about it at great length, you know, how those sort of work. Uh, and a variety of other limitations of trade. So uh, we'll talk about those in terms of the distribution as well as alterations to the gains and losses associated with international trade um, in those types of policy environments. So when we've completed all that roughly midterm, you know, we'll have a midterm exam that will cover that material and then having completed it, we'll move on to international finance, which is the second half of the term. It's really the macroeconomics of, 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 of all this, right? Okay. Uh, and in that section, we're going to be covering international financial uh, flows and the patterns of those flows. So capital is moving from money, I guess, would be maybe a better way to say it at this point in the term. Money is moving from, you know, this place to that place. Why is it moving there? You know, what? how has that changed over time? Uh, how likely is it to change in the future? We'll also talk at great length about exchange rate regimes. That is to say, you know, the choice to engage a fixed or a flexible exchange rate, as well as any of the myriad of in-between policies that nations can choose. You know, what are the pros of that? What are the cons? Why would a nation choose to utilize a fixed exchange rate? Why would uh, a nation choose to limit its capital flows or outflows? And then what would be the likely impact of those policy choices on the business environment as well as individual businesses? We'll also consider those policy choices from a national perspective. So what, what are the advantages and disadvantages from a national perspective? Why do nations choose one thing or the other? And then finally, we'll learn about international financial institutions or the rudiments of those. So World Bank, IMF, so on and so forth. How do those things work? Why do they exist? And how do they impact international trade? Okay. So some of you may be thinking, well, you know, there's a course in finance here at UW Clear called International Finance. Is this the same course? And the answer is no. Uh, you will note if you've taken that course or you know others who have taken the course, you will notice some overlap between the two. However, that course is primarily from a business perspective, as in should my business invest, invest in country X or Y uh, and um, should should we you know build a factory in country Z or country A? Uh, the economics perspective is more from a national perspective, that is from a government perspective. Why would a government do this? Why would they not do this? Um, what is their interest in a variety of policy choices? So of course, government is trying to set up a particularly in particular environment in which business in general should operate. Uh, and then business has to operate within that environment because of course it's the government that makes the rules. So you'll notice some overlap, but you'll notice that the perspective is extremely different here than it would be in FIN 322. Okay. So I'm a huge believer in that all economics classes should be empirical. That is, they should all have utilized data. Okay. Um, if you're going to be an economist in 2020, it's expected. I don't care whether you go into business or you go into government, you go into a nonprofit. It's expected that if you're an economist, you know how to find data, you know how to work with data, right? So uh, I incorporate data into all my classes without exception, uh, including even <laughs> the other classes, history of economic thought right now. They, they, they have some data as well, okay? Um, but here's some data sources. Are these all the only data sources? No, they're not the only data sources. The amount of data available these days is basically limitless. It's absolutely amazing. Okay, to a, to an old guy like me who remembers when we, you know, literally, I have the books in my office. You ever want to see like the old international trade books? <laughs> I can can show you those. Um, it just seems incredibly primitive now. Um, so these are some, right, that are you, you might find useful. The first one is the OECD site, and that stands for the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Uh, really good 
source for a lot of data and I'll put this PowerPoint up so you don't you can click through right and you don't you don't need to write that web address down now um, you, you could Google search OECD data too right and you, it's gonna come right up uh, probably you're already you've already done that um, but it's a good source for a lot of a lot of international data um, you know what's going where what the various uh, trade positions of different nations are what's going on with the currency uh, this can all be found uh, at the OECD the second source is the St. Louis Fed uh, website which which every economist I know uses uh, this is a excellent this is a clearinghouse site so what the Fred site does is it brings data from all over the place and makes it available to you and it also has all kinds of really cool tools uh, to help you do data analysis and do effective data presentation so you should absolutely positively get to know how to use this site uh, FRED stands for Federal Reserve Economic Database in this case everybody just calls it the FRED site okay so you should go there you should learn how to use it um, it's primarily US data here there is some international well there's more than some right there's a lot of international data it's just compared to the US data it's relatively small um, uh, in terms of US data boy you can you can find almost anything you'd ever want to know at the Fred site okay the third site is trading economics which is private sector uh, um, information it has a lot of basic trade data uh, exchange rate data for countries all over the world uh, it's easy to use it it has a paid section but uh, the basic content is free so uh, all, all all the rest of course the government sites are, are free right just pop on and use it it's cool um, but that's trading economics is a good good site I find it useful for for some things uh, and then finally the World Bank uh, I mentioned a little earlier but uh, also a good source for a lot of basic data as well as a lot of sort of cultural information about different nations like rudimentary cultural information so you wanted to know a little bit about the culture and economic and sociological and economic environment of a nation uh, the World Bank will will get you started there uh, also a lot a lot of basic economic data too okay so that's just a sampling right this tons and tons of data out there and we'll work through some of it throughout the term all right uh, moving on to the last couple slides here which we'll go through relatively quickly so this is an in-class class right the in-class portions of the class uh, well it's in the next slide we'll leave it but all class lectures will be on canvas a lot of them are there already you can go check them out I'll be adding stuff throughout the term however and improving the stuff that's there so um, keep an eye out that you should get in the habit of checking the canvas site on a daily basis uh, and in the announcement sections I'll be putting stuff up there pretty regularly uh, content will appear regularly uh, discussion section stuff all that's going to be uh, updating constantly so you should just get in the habit of, of being there at least once a day okay there are several assignments throughout this course uh, those should be completed in a timely manner uh, I really 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 don't want to see all 12 assignments the last week of class that will make me really upset because you won't have learned anything and you will have wasted everybody's time uh, yourselves included so please don't do that I'm not a stickler for I mean there's some due dates on on the canvas site I'm going to be putting up more but um, and I'm not a super stickler for that because I'd rather have you go through the content first for the course uh, and by the way make sure to check out all the appropriate content on any given assignment before you start working on it uh, but I'd rather have you go through all the content and get the assignment well done and have it be 12 hours late than have it be 12 hours early and be poorly done it does everybody more good uh, for it to be 12 hours late and well done myself yourself everybody uh, than it does to do the opposite the assignments should be completed in a professional manner so you should all your assignments you should treat them as though you're turning them in for work so imagine you're you know you're at a job right and your boss said you need to do this 
the work should be done to that level. So, you know, photographs of spiral bound notebooks and things like that, really not appropriate. Um, if you're worried, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do X, Y, or Z uh, to make it look good, you know, now's the time to learn. Now's the time to get started on that, like right now, like tonight um, and in the coming days. Uh, if you have questions, you know, I'll be happy to direct you uh, in a variety of ways. If you're unsure whether content is up to quality or not, I'm super happy to look through things ahead of getting turned in and let you know. All right, so that's most of the grade in this class, right? So you, you should take those assignments seriously. They're not sort of just kind of things to blow off. Okay. The other grades in the class will be on a midterm. So I already mentioned this. The midterm will be on international trade and then a final, which will be on international finance. This is not cumulative. In fact, there's not even a huge amount of overlap between the two. Okay. Uh, finally, then, you know, when we're in class, uh, we'll be there working on problems. We'll be learning about data sets and we'll be answering student questions. So to the extent possible, the you know the Monday class will be the same as the Wednesday class will be the same as the Friday class. So each group will kind of be a small subset of the class where we can kind of work intensely on some some issues, right? Now, if you're not able to attend these for whatever reason, this is going to be a difficult semester. You know, I'm going to have challenges. You're going to have challenges, right? So we're not going to be a stickler for things. If you know, if you if you can't be there, it's okay. Right, all the content is online, but those in-class portions are there for us all to sort of work through things together. Right, um, if you're in the Monday group, please don't come on Wednesday or Friday because the room's pretty small. I think you're going to be surprised at how small the room is. It's going to be full with just 11 or 12 of us on any given day, uh, and so we really can't we can't have switching around. Right, so if you're a Monday person, you're Monday. If you're Wednesday, okay, you get you get the idea. We can we can all work with it. Um, you know, if you're a Friday person and you don't come on Monday, you know, it's not going to be different content on, on Monday. I mean, there's going to be some different student questions. It's unavoidable, right? But, uh, you know, to the extent that I can make them the same, we'll, we'll make them the same. All right, I think that's plenty enough for today. Uh, we'll leave it there, and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, take care, everybody.